Scott Charney is Corporate Vice President of Trustworthy Computing at the Microsoft Corporation. Welcome. And Mr. Daniel Burton is Senior Vice President of Global Public Policy at Salesforce.com. And Mr. Mike Bradshaw is D Director of Google Federal. And Mr. Nick Combs is Chief Technology Officer of EMC Federal. And Mr. Gregory Ganger is a Professor of Electrical and Computer Engineering, as well as the Director of the Parallel Database Lab at Carnegie Mellon University. Welcome and thank you all for being here. I, um, let me uh, say to you that we always swear our witnesses in. So if you will stand and, uh, and raise your right hand. You agree to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. If so, answer in the affirmative. You may be seated. Let the record reflect that all the witnesses answered in the affirmative. Affirmative. Let me start with you, uh, Mr. Charney, and, and we just go right down the line. And um, you know in terms of the fact that you have five minutes, and then after the, for me, you know how it works, and uh, and after, you know, the light comes on caution, and then, you know, and then red and all of that. So uh, and then which will allow us the, the ample time to be able to raise questions. And you can see that we have a lot of questions. <laughs> So why don't we just start with you, Mr. Turner, come right down the line. Thank you, Chairman Towns, Ranking Member Issa, Chairwoman Watson. Thank you for the opportunity to share Microsoft's view on the benefits and risks of cloud computing for the federal government. My name is Scott Charney. I'm the Corporate Vice President for Trustworthy Computing and Environmental Sustainability at Microsoft. I also serve as one of the four co-chairs for the Center for Strategic and International Studies Commission on Cybersecurity for the 44th Presidency. Prior to joining Microsoft, I was Chief of the Computer Crime and Intellectual Property Section at the U.S. Department of Justice. In my testimony today, I want to describe how cloud computing impacts responsibilities for the security, privacy, and reliability of IT systems, and I want to highlight the importance of Electronic Communications Privacy Act reform and identity management issues. While cloud computing creates new opportunities, it also presents new challenges. More specifically, a government agency using a cloud service may shift certain security, privacy, and reliability responsibilities to the cloud provider. To ensure this is done properly, government agencies need to clearly identify their security, privacy, and reliability requirements to the cloud provider, and cloud providers need to be transparent about the steps taken to meet those requirements. In Microsoft's case, we employ a holistic approach in managing security, privacy, and reliability issues, an approach that is designed to meet or exceed customer requirements. This approach, which encompasses physical, personnel, and IT security, has three parts. First, we have a risk-based information security program that assesses and prioritizes security and operational threats to the business. Second, we maintain and regularly update a detailed set of security controls to mitigate risk. Third, we use a compliance framework to ensure that controls are designed appropriately and work operating effectively. A key part of this process is the Microsoft Security Development Lifecycle, or SDL, which helps to improve security and privacy protections in our software and our services. The SDL consists of processes and tools designed to reduce the number and severity of vulnerabilities in software products, manage risk in computing environments, ensure appropriate and agile response when incidents occur, and help protect people and their personal information by imposing mandatory engineering practices related to security and privacy. By building and managing resilient infrastructure with trustworthy people, we can further ensure high availability and 24 by 7 support in our service level agreements. While the cloud is getting ready for the government, the government must get ready for the cloud. Agencies continue to struggle to identify, manage, and account for the security of data and systems. Moving to the cloud does not eliminate an agency's responsibility for its data. To adapt to the cloud, an agency must clearly identify and communicate its requirements and expectations to the cloud provider, who in turn must indicate how those requirements and expectations will be met. Progress is being made. The Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program, known as FedRAMP, is an important initial effort to create efficiencies and define responsibilities. 
This program enables common assessments of cloud service providers, allowing a cloud provider to certify once and have that certification shared among the agencies. In addition to increased efficiencies, FedRAMP can assure better transparency into cloud provider practices. In addition to managing its own systems, the government has a policy role to play. In this regard, it must ensure that privacy protections for citizens keep pace with technological changes. Congress enacted the Electronic Communications Privacy Act almost 25 years ago. Dramatic technology advancements, including the shift to cloud computing, require ECPA, as it is known, to be updated and aligned with reasonable privacy expectations. Additionally, industry and government must create more robust identities for Internet use, particularly as we adapt to the cloud. There are over 1.8 billion Internet users worldwide. The mechanisms used to identify people and devices on the Internet, even when sensitive data or critical infrastructures are involved, is weak. And as the government offers more citizen services online and individuals store more sensitive information in the cloud, electronic identifications will become increasingly important. The recently released draft National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace represents significant progress in the dialogue about how to create trust in online transactions, but much remains to be done. In closing, clarity and transparency about government requirements and cloud provider offerings is critically important. The more precise and transparent we are, the greater the trust we will build and the greater the opportunity we create. Thank you for your important leadership on the issue of cloud computing, and I look forward to working with you on this important topic. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Charney. Uh, Mr. Burton? Thank you, uh, Chairman Towns, Chairwoman Watson, Ranking Member Issa, members of the committee. Uh, thank you for holding this hearing and inviting me to share my views. As the Senior Vice President for Global Public Policy at Salesforce.com, I am deeply involved in discussions with government about cloud computing, and I applaud the efforts of this committee and the subcommittee to shed light on this effort. Salesforce.com is a leading enterprise cloud computing company whose applications allow organizations to input, store, process, and access data about their customers over the Internet. In addition, we provide a cloud collaboration tool called Chatter and a cloud technology platform called Force.com. Several U.S. federal agencies already use Salesforce, including the Army, HHS, NASA, GSA, the State Department, the Census Bureau, and many others. In my remarks, I will make reference to the Salesforce enterprise cloud computing model, not the consumer cloud computing model popularized by companies like Amazon and eBay. Descriptions of cloud computing are like the parable of the blind men and the elephant. One blind man grabbed its trunk and said it resembled a giant snake. Another its legs and said it was a tree. A third its tusks and said it was an enormous walrus and so on. This parable will sound familiar to anyone who follows cloud computing. Some companies state that since it involves third-party data centers, they are cloud providers. Others say that since it uses subscription payments, they are cloud providers. Still others say that since it is accessed over IT networks, they are cloud providers. While each of these descriptions is true as far as it goes, by themselves, these discrete services do not constitute cloud computing. Nor can the companies that provide these discrete services be called cloud computing providers any more than an elephant can be called a snake, a tree, or a walrus. True cloud computing consists of a combination of third-party data centers, subscription payments, internet access, and something known as multi-tenant architecture, which NIST notes in its definition. A good analogy for multi-tenancy is a skyscraper. Just like a skyscraper allows many occupants to run their businesses discreetly in the same building, multi-tenant cloud computing allows many users to run their applications discreetly on the same computing platform. Although users share the underlying infrastructure, they can only view the data and applications that pertain to them. In this way, multi-tenant cloud computing is like online banking. It lets a number of people use their accounts simultaneously while keeping their information secure and private. 
The great benefit of multi-tenancy is that it can satisfy the needs of numerous organizations on a single computing stack. Salesforce, for example, processes the data and applications for its 77,000 customers on just a few thousand servers. A single tenant computing model, which is sometimes referred to as a private cloud, could require several hundred thousand servers to manage a customer base this side. For government, multi-tenant cloud computing offers cost savings, flexibility, fast deployment, and lower risk of project failure. Traditional government IT systems require upfront investments in hardware and software and can take years to implement. As a result, they are often out of date and over budget by the time they are deployed. Multi-tenant cloud computing eliminates large upfront costs and lets government agencies start with a few users and scale rapidly so there is much less chance of waste and failure. Understand that cost data ownership, security, and inter interoperability are of particular interest to this committee. Most studies conclude that cloud computing offers important cost savings. A recent Brookings study concluding that the cost savings for government average between 25 and 50 percent. Salesforce case studies support this conclusion. As for ownership of data, Salesforce claims no rights to the information its customers submit to our cloud services. We use and process this information only as our customers instruct us to or to fulfill contractual and legal obligations. If a customer decides it no longer wants to use our cloud services, we make their information available to them in a format that allows them to move it elsewhere. The Salesforce security management system is based on internationally accepted security standards like ISO 27001. Perhaps the most compelling evidence of our security is the fact that over 77,000 organizations around the world, including very large institutions in highly regulated sectors like financial services, healthcare, and government, trust their information and cloud applications to Salesforce. When it comes to interoperability, the proof is in performance. Over 50% of the transactions we process are handled automatically. In other words, about 150 million times per day, our computers seamlessly operate with outside computers without human involvement. I appreciate the committee's efforts to advance the government's ability to take advantage of this important technology and look forward to your questions. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Burton. Let me just say to the committee members that we have um, three votes. And we will hear from Mr. Bradshaw, and then I will recess the committee, and we will return 10 minutes after the last vote. Mr. Bradshaw. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Chairwoman Watson, Ranking Member Issa, and members of the committee, I lead the Google team that provides cloud computing services to the federal government, and I'm pleased to be here. Federal IT is at a crossroads. Down one path, the adoption of cloud computing, we see more competition and innovation. Down another path, which keeps IT tethered to the traditional desktop computing model, we have more of the status quo, meaning fewer choices and less competition. If there's one thing I want to leave you with today, it's this. The cloud is secure, the cloud saves taxpayer money, and the cloud can make government more efficient. We believe federal IT procurement policy should encourage competition and choice. As you've heard today, there are three basic types of IT infrastructure, cloud, there's legacy, and a hybrid model that tethers the cloud to legacy systems. Google offers cloud solutions that are used by two million businesses. A growing number of state and local governments, from Los Angeles to Orlando, use the cloud, as do federal agencies, including the Departments of Defense, Energy, and Interior, as well as NASA, the SEC, and the GSA. I'd like to focus on three benefits from federal adoption of the cloud. One, enhanced security. Two, savings for taxpayers. And three, more competition and innovation. First, the cloud offers security advantages over legacy and tether cloud alternatives. Under legacy computing models, we store critical data on our computers and servers, um, either at work or at home. This is the equivalent of keeping cash under our mattress. Storing data securely in a multi-tenant cloud is like keeping cash in a bank. Cloud providers are security professionals, and they can offer better security than customers do on their own. 
There have been several examples where government laptops and hard drives were lost or stolen, compromising the sensitive personal information of hundreds of thousands of individuals. <clears throat> In fact, GAO confirmed in 2009 that recent data losses occurring at federal agencies have been the result of physical thefts or improper safeguarding of systems. An important security benefit of the full cloud model is that you can control security updates much more consistently and easily. Research shows most organizations take between 25 to 60 days to deploy security patches, and some CIOs admit it can take up to six months. In the cloud, everyone gets security updates as soon as they're available, not weeks or months later. Attacks come frequently, and cloud computing allows us to react quickly. Hackers do not care about the labels assigned to cloud computing. Whether the cloud is public or private or otherwise, hackers will exploit security vulnerabilities where they find them. That's why security must be judged based on an examination of specific security controls in place by a given cloud computing implementation. At Google, we protect data by shredding and splitting it across numerous servers and data centers, making an attack much harder because no user's data resides on a single disk or server. The data is replicated and spread across different locations, so if a hurricane or an earthquake strikes one place, the application keeps running elsewhere. This is important for backup and disaster recovery. It was a key consideration for the city of Los Angeles because of their location in an earthquake zone. Backup and recovery solutions are built into Google's cloud architecture, and it comes at no extra cost. Second, the cloud can save taxpayer dollars. This April, Brookings found that the government agencies that switched to some form of cloud computing saw up to 50% savings. Last year, Forrester calculated that Google's cloud-based email service was one-third the cost of legacy email. To put that in context, the federal government spends $76 billion per year on IT, with $20 billion of that devoted to hardware, software, and file servers. Other cost savings come from improving productivity, enabling more federal employees to telework, and reducing energy consumption. Third, introducing more choices into the federal marketplace will intensify competition, which in turn will drive innovation up and prices down. The federal government is embracing cloud computing, and we support the administration's effort to drive the adoption of the cloud, including FedRAMP. We strongly support the effort to accelerate the process. Naturally, legacy providers would benefit if they didn't have to compete with the cloud. So it's not surprising that some may try to slow this transition by fomenting fear of cloud security. This overlooks the security problems we've seen in legacy IT systems and it fails to recognize how these problems can be solved by the cloud. We're out of time now, and so uh, we're going to recess, and we'll reconvene 10 minutes after the last vote. Thank you so much. Thank you.